It's time for another travel duffel bag comparison. In a previous video, I've compared the Patagonia Black Hole with the Osprey Transporter, and now I want to compare it with another similar travel duffel bag. This is the REI Big Haul 40. Patagonia Black Hole, Big Haul, Black Hole, Big Haul. Coming up. Welcome to One Bag Travels. If you're new here, this is a channel dedicated to helping you with one bag carry-on travel by providing backpack, gear reviews, and travel advice. If you'd like to learn more about carry-on travel, then please consider subscribing to our channel. A quick overview of these bags. On my right is the Patagonia Black Hole Duffel Bag. It's a 45 liter travel duffel and retails for about $120. On my left is the REI Big Haul 40. It's a 40 liter travel duffel that retails for about $90. Both of these duffels have removable backpack straps, top carry handles, they have a large duffel opening, a small front and zippered pocket on the inside lid, and then a small front access zipper on the front of the bag. But there are some major differences. The REI uses a ripstop nylon on the upper part of the bag and a 1680 denier ballistic nylon on the bottom and the sides. Well, the Patagonia bag uses a 900 denier ripstop polyester throughout the whole bag. They both have a laminate TPU coating, which basically makes the fabric more or less waterproof, but the coating on the Patagonia bag is much, much thicker. It's really so thick, the bag will basically just stand up on its own. I have nothing in either of these bags right now, and as you can see, the Patagonia, the fabric is stiff enough that it stands up on its own. This makes it really easy to pack the bag because it's not gonna be flopping over when it's empty. Well, the TPU coating on the REI bag is a lot thinner. The fabric isn't nearly as firm, and the bag is gonna slightly flop over when it's empty. As far as the rest of the hardware is concerned on these two bags, it's all really high quality and virtually identical. They both use large number 10 YKK zippers on the main compartment, and then number eights on the rest of the bag. And they both have these beefy Duraflex buckles. The REI uses a locking zipper on the main compartment well, the Patagonia bag doesn't. I don't really think this is a big deal because you can pretty easily just lock the zipper pulls on the Patagonia together with a TSA lock or a small locking carabiner. The volume capacity listed for the REI bag on their website is 40 liters, while the Patagonia bag is listed at a 45 liter bag. But to me, they both look pretty similar. The capacity is determined by the manufacturer and there's really no measurement standards so the number they list on their website can really vary kind of all over the place. I'm gonna do a little pack test, just stuff these things with some t-shirts and see which one holds more. In the last demo, I showed that the Patagonia bag actually held less than the Transporter, even though it's listed as five liters bigger. I'll start off by packing the REI with a bunch of loose clothes, t-shirts, shorts, etc. I'm gonna see how many things I can fit in this bag and then I'll transfer it over to the Patagonia and see how similar the volume is. This is the REI bag completely packed out. I just have t-shirts in there, but I'm gonna take all these items and transfer them over to the Patagonia bag now. If the volume is correct on the manufacturer listed for these bags, I should be able to fit about a gallon's worth more clothes in the Patagonia bag. Well, that's kind of what I expected. I just transferred everything from the REI bag over into the Patagonia, and it's pretty much exactly the same volume. I could probably stuff an extra t-shirt in here, but I'd probably have a hard time getting a lid closed. That was fun. That was the first time I've done that for these bags, and I was really curious to see what the capacity was. Sometimes I wonder how manufacturers come up with their capacity volume listing. Sometimes I think they just make it up, because sometimes you'll have two bags that have the same listed volume, and you can fit a completely different amount of stuff in each one. Moving on to comparing the external features on these two bags, they're pretty similar, but there's some major differences. They both have backpack straps, a top grab carry handle, side carry handles, and a small front zippered pocket. But unfortunately, neither of these bags comes with a shoulder strap. Looking a little more closely at the differences between the backpack straps on these two bags, the Patagonia straps are completely removable. Using these plastic D-ring buckles on top of the bag 
and these plastic side snap buckles on the bottom. I don't really know what to do with these straps when I take them off because they don't have a dedicated pocket to store them in and there isn't a shoulder strap carry option. The straps on the REI bag aren't completely removable, but you can release them from the bottom with these plastic buckles and store them in a hidden top pocket. I personally think this is a much better option. It gets the straps hidden and out of your way. It's a really great feature. The straps are pretty bare bones on both of these bags. I found the straps on the REI to be just a little bit more comfortable of the two. They're slightly wider. They have a little bit more pronounced of a curve and the foam is softer and they have a mesh backing. Neither of these bags is super comfortable to wear, but of the two, the REI bag sits a little bit better on my back than the Patagonia bag. But I don't like the lack of the back padding or a lack of a sternum strap. But for a pretty inexpensive, minimalistic duffel, it's actually decently comfortable to carry. The Patagonia bag isn't quite as comfortable for me. The bag sits a little bit weird on my back. It's kind of a weird shape and there's no way to adjust the angle or the distances between the shoulder straps. And this top carry handle kind of gets in the way. There's no way to secure it out of the way when you're carrying it in the backpack mode. One thing neither of these bags does very well is the padding on the back of the backpack. There's no padding, foam mesh, or any kind of air ventilation. The side of the duffel that lays against your back when you're carrying it as a backpack is just the plastic TPU laminate. And how it feels on your back is gonna largely depend on what you put in the top of the duffel bag. The plastic also isn't very breathable and it's really not comfortable to carry for a long duration. One feature on the REI bag that makes it really stand out for me from the Patagonia bag is the use of these compression straps. It's actually a pretty neat design. There's four compression straps at all and you can either connect them on the sides of the bags or if you detach them, you can extend the strap and run it over the bag and use it as a top compression strap. It's a really great feature to be able to compress the bag, especially when you're not carrying it completely packed out. And it's also really nice because the height on this bag is slightly higher than the standard carry-on dimension. Comparing the other carry options between these two bags, they both have these side straps on either end of the bag that meet together in the middle for a top grab carry handle. The main difference with these is the removability. On the REI bag, you're able to remove the straps completely using these aluminum hook and fabric loops, but on the Patagonia bag, they're just sewn into place. I think it's a huge advantage to be able to remove these handles. It gives you the option to use them or not use them if you don't want. And they're also not in the way when you're carrying the bag in backpack mode. Comparing the internal features and designs in these two bags, they both have a top U-zip opening front facing lid. The inside of these bags is basically the same. They both have a large spacious interior with no further compartments or separators. And they both have two small zippered mesh pockets on the underside of the lid. The lid and the interior mesh pockets on the REI are considerably larger than on the Patagonia bag. In summary, these are both great little duffel bags. They have really sturdy fabric and great hardware. I think they would make great weekend or car camping duffel bags, but because neither of them does a really great job with a backpack carry, I don't think that they would be very comfortable to use for long-term travel. If you're looking for a solid gym outdoor duffel bag with a bomb-proof water-resistant fabric, the Patagonia is a great choice. But I don't like the backpack carry straps. It kind of sits weird on my back and it's not very comfortable. If you're looking for a little cheaper option, but you still want a high quality, simple, functional design, and you don't mind a lack of back padding, then the REI is an awesome little duffel for the price. For being nearly identical, the REI bag is much cheaper. It has removable top grab carry handles. It comes with side compression straps, and the backpack straps are a little bit more comfortable than the Patagonia. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions about either of these travel duffels, then I'll be happy to answer them in the comment section below. And if you like reviews and bag comparison videos like this, then please consider subscribing to our channel. And thanks for watching.